Kitchen. Today I'm filming a personal statement video. So I'm going to split this video into two parts. First of all, I'm going to talk about my personal statement and I'm going to read my personal statement out. And then I'm going to talk about your personal statement, tips, any law specific tips and books and work experiences and everything like that. So if you have no one to read your personal statement, I can be that friend that reads your personal statement. Okay, so just for a bit of a background information about me, I'm at the University of Cambridge studying law. GCSEs, I got 6 A stars and 5 A's. A levels, I got 4 A stars. You know what, I'm sharing my grades. I feel like I'm asking people to judge me. But it's just for, you know, contextual information. So I went to a state school and I was the only person to go to Cambridge that year. And I got offers from Cambridge, Newcastle, Leeds, Durham, and I withdrew from Manchester because by that time the Cambridge offer already came in so I didn't need the Manchester offer so I just withdrew and put Cambridge as my first and then Durham as my second although I didn't want to go to Durham. Isn't this so cute? So I'm going to read my personal statement. Hearing someone read out loud their personal statement, for me I found it really helpful. Like if you guys haven't seen Elena's video, I watched that when I wrote my personal statement. And while I was watching, I think I just jotted down some ideas because when you listen to someone, I guess it helps you to come up with the ideas yourself. So make sure you grab some, your phone and um, write something down. So. I haven't read this since I submitted it. I recently gained a different perspective of the law, the importance of its accessibility and use. In order for the law to protect, it must deliver justice. This awareness was stimulated back in Hong Kong. Stimulated? I experienced the legal system deal with one altercation where racism escalated to violence. Observing the aftermath of an incident of public disorder, which occurred within the tight confines of public transport, I saw the victims suffer. The language barrier prevented the victims from being heard. The police offered little help. Wishful for an alternative outcome. <laughs> this instance engraved a deep impression on me, on the importance of the application of law. The law exists, but justice was not served here. Um, I don't think my writing style is like that. I don't think I knew what altercation was until I wrote my personal statement and somebody gave feedback and was like, you should change that argument to altercation. And I was like, Sure, anything that makes me sound smart, I'll do it. This led me to conduct an extended project on the impact of the justice system in Hong Kong in comparison to the United Kingdom, two countries which have framed my life. So I was born in Hong Kong and then moved to the UK when I was two. By comparing the recidivism rates, recidivism, it gave me a deeper insight into how culture can affect the law. For example, as Hong Kong is collectivist, whereas the United Kingdom is individualist, Individuals of the Asian culture will typically prioritize harmony within a society, allowing criminals to integrate back into society more effectively than the individualist culture. This can explain how rehabilitation appears to be more effective in Hong Kong and how culture can contribute to the effectiveness of laws. Consequently, the motivation to study law became more personal. Ooh, okay. Developing my knowledge of the law will allow me to support others, such as the victims above, as the law is a mediator and should be universally applied. I want to ensure the law which impacts those around me serves justice and, as stressed in The Rule of Law by Tom Bingham, is accessible. Accessibility includes the idea that those who are entitled to a given right know of this right without excessive difficulty. Through language interpretation, I understood how meaningful translating words into understanding for others is as it extends accessibility. This furthered my desire to help those who cannot access the law. My own interpretation of justice and equality was challenged upon reading Eve was framed by Helena Kennedy. Previously, I believed that justice meant treating everyone exactly the same regardless of who they are. The book introduced me to judicial discretion, which caused me to re-examine. Perhaps justice is obtained by giving a fair and unbiased judgement whilst taking into account personal circumstances. Someone who deliberately commits a crime may be more responsible than one who was forced into it. No way. Thus, by dealing with situations case by case, it may prove to be more effective at discouraging recidivism and protecting the innocent. Undertaking work experience at the Crown Prosecution Service exposed the need for a lawyer to be adaptable and resilient due to unpredictable situations. The low expectations of the prosecutors regarding the likelihood of reoffending was fascinating, and observing the scope of issues the law dealt with reaffirmed to me the importance of law today within a society. Moreover, through residentials at Cambridge, Durham and London, I acknowledge the challenge and commitment required to read law. This built up my diligence to manifest my interest into essays, group projects and discussions within short time restraints. 
Through regular tutoring of students, voluntary work, and monthly law masterclasses, I strengthen my ability to prioritize in order to fulfill my responsibilities. I anticipate the study of law in depth at university, and I am optimistic to develop further invaluable attributes and thought processes in the learning of law. To be honest, I don't think I was thinking as I was reading that. It didn't feel like I wrote it, but I did. So for tips for your personal statement, starting sentences or phrases to use. So I actually found starting my personal statement really difficult. The beginning has a lot of impact, but at the same time, it's not the be all end all, but you want to grab the reader's attention and be like, this is who I am. I think the first few sentences set the tone of your personal statement. The most important thing for me was to make it personal and relate back to myself. After all, the personal statement is personal and it should be a representation of yourself and your motivations in studying the course. So you can plagiarize some ideas that I have. They're not very good, but there's something for you to think about and and I guess you can change up the words, see if they help you to develop some paragraphs. First one, I recently gained a different perspective, view, insight of the law. So this is similar to what I use for my own personal statement. And I linked it to something that happened in the train in Hong Kong. It escalated and they punched each other and I was sent to the police station. And even if you haven't had a personal in real life experience, you can use the sentence but say that you gained a different perspective from a book you read or from work experience or from an online seminar. Something that is still showing that you proactively did something about your passion and they like those kind of things, you know? So speaking of personal experiences, so you know this pandemic, if COVID-19 did affect you personally in a way that relates to your academic subject, then I think it could be something good to put in your personal statement. But at the same time, I feel like a lot of people will do that. And unless if you can really link it back to law, biology, whatever, then I would suggest refraining from that. Second one, inserting a teaching or observation from your subject and then saying that this is one of the most important lessons I learned from X. So for example, law is constantly changing. Don't use the sentence, you can do so much better than that. Law is constantly changing. This is one of the most important lessons I learned from my own work experience, from a book, from something. Quite so much with the first one, but it's um, different. Sorry, I don't know if these are helpful. Once again, you can see I'm very big on making your personal statement personal and also the first sentence very personal just because nobody else can write what you're writing if it's a personal experience, you know what I mean? So I think it really captures the attention of those Cambridge people who are reading your personal statement. Third thing, referring to a book that you read and then talking about what that prompted you to do. So a sentence idea. Eve was framed by Helena Kennedy, introduced me to judicial discretion, a topic that sparked my interest in law. I personally wouldn't begin with a quote from a book unless if you really have a good reason to do so and you can link it very well but just because quoting something from a book it's not yours you know and so I think you would need a really good reason to do that and try to link it to the paragraph but if you talk about you reading this book and then it prompting you to think about this xyz then once again it shows them that you can think and you've done something about your passion you're not just applying because you randomly chose a course they want to see how you've been proactive about your subject that you want to study so if the book made you do something or learn something then that could be a good way to start your personal statement for starting with a question I personally wouldn't start with a question so I don't know why I'm putting this in here but I know it can work very well. If I had to, I would probably use this sentence. Does the law truly require justice? This question lingered in my mind after my legal work experience, prompting me to read The Rule of Law by Tom Bingham. What is important is what follows on from your question. Do you answer the question? Did that question make you do something? I think just putting a question there that doesn't link to anything won't help, but something that once again you can relate back to yourself. Everything goes back to you, especially if you're gonna use this personal statement for your interviews later. I'm just making sure that that question links to the rest of your personal statement because the flow of it is really important. Anything that shows that you have motivation in studying law is to be honest a good way to start and I know starting is difficult and I think for introductions I typed like loads of different ideas and I didn't really pick out an introduction until later. I think I'm going to link all the different drafts that I did so you can read them below but basically my personal statement changed drastically so I wouldn't worry too much about the introduction just start for now and write down something which resonates with you and then you can go back to it and edit it. I'm sorry I didn't give too many ideas but I hope that's some food for thought on how you could technically start your personal statement. For Oxford, you want your personal statement to be like 80% academic and 20% not academic. So the first things that I wrote on my personal statement looks like this. 
As you can see, it's just literally like a brief structure. I wrote down all the things that I wanted to include and you can see that I repeated I love law constantly because what does Cambridge want to see? That you love law, that you love, love, love law. So I really wanted my personal statement to show that and to scream I love law. They're really looking for that passion and love for your subject and you should just make it seem like you don't want to do anything but law. No, no, don't do that. You, you need to show you have a personality too, but it's just important that you can show them that you will still stick to the subject even under hard circumstances because you have a true passion and motivation for this subject and make sure you actually do have that kind of passion and love for the subject. I do think I have a passion for law. <laughs> it was the only thing that I wanted to study at university and even then trying to express that kind of passion was difficult so don't worry if it's not coming out correctly just keep on working at it and editing. Structure wise there's not really a correct way to do your personal statement. I talked about how I did mine but to be honest I didn't stick to any kind of strict structure. I just made sure that every single paragraph had a main point and a purpose, that I put that paragraph in there for a reason and that they can clearly see that. And it's very crucial to link your paragraphs because it just makes everything flow a lot better. And actually because of some feedback that I got, I think for my second last draft of the personal statement, I basically reshuffled like nearly all of my paragraphs and it made my personal statement so much better. I think if you focus on making good paragraphs to begin with, then you can work on just changing up the structure later. Obviously you would hope that every single paragraph is very impactful but you can put your best paragraphs or the things that are most worthwhile talking about towards the top. So I do think for structure it still can be amended, focus on the content first and get that down. So I want to talk about drafts and how important it is to get feedback. I know this is quite self-explanatory because you know you do a draft get feedback but you know like it's important. So I personally did a total of eight drafts. I didn't have in mind how many drafts I wanted to do but two important things. First save a copy of every single draft as a new document and then second thing make sure that each draft is read by preferably another person, a different person, a new person. If you can't, then the same maybe three or four people would be enough. Some ideas like your teacher, your sixth form head, your friends, your mom, your dad, your sister, your brother or me. <laughs> so if you don't have a friend, I can be that friend from Cambridge that reads your personal statement and gives feedback. Just drop a comment below and then send me an email with your YouTube username as well so I can give you feedback and I'll try to get back to you guys as soon as possible. I think there's not that many people watching my videos so I don't think that many of you will send me your personal statement but if you do want this brain, not sure if it exists, I'd be really happy to help and give feedback as much as I can. Okay, so moving on to some law specific tips. So the first thing I did when I was doing my personal statement is I did a lot of research. So like you, I'm watching these kind of videos. Ips did this really good personal statement tips video that I watched when I was doing my personal statement. And I searched up like crazy what Cambridge, Oxford was looking for in a personal statement. For example, I read this article on Think Cambridge Law about what they were looking for in a personal statement. And those kind of things helped me to think in their position what they wanted to see from me. Really, I narrowed it down to just motivation I love law, so the passion, being hardworking and being proactive, that's not free, but being academic, having perseverance, that kind of thing, those things can all be shown in the different things that you choose to put in your personal statement. Obviously, there's no model personal statement, I suppose. You're looking for all kinds of people as long as you have that kind of love for your subject, but make sure you have a look at that and I will link some more stuff below as well. So, books. What books should you read and put in your Oxbridge personal statement? <laughs> I made the great mistake of buying five books that I think I still haven't read like two of these and I don't know if I'm planning to but basically I recommend you to read two books and put two books in your personal statement. This is only a personal opinion. To be honest I really think that one book should be enough but I chose two just to keep it safe and two is a nice number. About these books is that you have to actually read these especially if it comes up in your interview that's really important. So the books that I bought and I think I do recommend two books that I actually mentioned in my personal statement are these two. Eve was framed by Helena Kennedy and Tom Bingham's Rule of Law because everybody reads this so I, I bought it too. I love this one. I can't remember what was in it. can't really remember what was in this either. I just thought this was a very powerful book. I bought The Justice Game by Geoffrey Robertson. I also bought Just Law by Helena Kennedy. This one I did read, Letter to the Law Student. I remember meeting Nicholas McBride at Cambridge and I was terrified but I, I read his book. So how I used these 
these books was. I read them, lol. And then I made notes of things that I found interesting and that I could potentially put in my personal statement. To be very fair, I'm very guilty of the fact that I literally bought these books in order to read for my personal statement. I think you can get a lot more out of it and more enjoyment if you buy books that you actually want to read, but honestly, I felt like I wasn't really up for furthering my lol passion through books. I prefer more things like work experience and things like that, but I still did it because that's what Cambridge wants. And then in my personal statement, as you saw, I only wrote about them in like one or two free sentences. Books are really good for your personal statement just because it keeps it academic and also shows that you did something about your subject. I prepared for the interviews by just making sure I knew how to give a summary of the book. One or two topics that I found really interesting that I could speak about in the interview. I had that in mind, but obviously they didn't ask. The main thing about choosing books for your personal statement is just choose something that you will find interesting. But I will put some links down below of like reading lists or things that Cambridge recommends for you to read. Okay, work experience. Cambridge doesn't care about work experience, but Oxbridge does care about ways that you try to use your passion. I'm not making much sense or structuring this video very well. I'm so sorry. So I did mention about work experience in my personal statement. I did one week at the Crown Prosecution Service and that was only two sentences in my personal statement because once again like I said your personal statement should be focusing on the academic side but although it was only two sentences every word counts and I think it was a good way to show my motivation for the subject and shows a form of commitment so I would say don't do work experience for your personal statement do it for yourself for the enrichment for the experience in general any kind of legal experience is really hard to get and if you can get work experience at GCSE or A level age then that's really really good but if you can't it's also not the end of the world I think that's also completely okay. You'll still apply to internships in uni and the main thing about putting work experience in your personal statement is just to show once again your passion and you can show your passion through other means as well. But for me, I made a document of everything that I could potentially apply to. I don't know how this pandemic is going to affect those kind of schemes but either way, I think law firms are quite eager to get more exposure to students that are at GCSE and A-level age. So I have made a document for you guys that is updated for 2020-2021 so you can check that document out and see if there's anything you want to apply to. So just some last miscellaneous tips. When you get feedback for your personal statement, make sure you really consider it because there's a reason why that person who's reading it as a third party said that. And when you are constantly looking at that piece of work, it's gonna eventually end up being blurred in your mind and you won't really be able to get like an objective view. At the same time, you should always be in control of your work. It should be reflective of you and represent you and your passion and your ambitions. So always be the one steering the direction of your personal statement, but also be open to constructive feedback, things that can help you to improve your structure, your grammar, things like that. Another thing is making sure you know when to stop editing. I did eight drafts and by the end it's definitely nowhere near perfect but I think I was happy enough to send it off because I felt like it represented enough of my passion. And another thing, just have confidence in your own ability and your passion for the subject. I really do hope that you love your subject. This is something you're investing your time, your effort, your money, everything for. Now it's just to start writing. The earlier you write, the more organized you're going to be. Another thing is flowery words and extra long sentences. So my writing style is unfortunately very flowery. I don't know why. And I found that this wasn't always the best and it's sometimes really unnecessary. Just use more simple and more precise, concise words and sentences. Just because they're reading so many of these, it's important that they know what your point is. So make sure that you can read it with ease. So I hope you enjoyed and found this useful. I'm sorry I didn't really structure it well. I also made a video for my interview which is the step after the personal statement so I will link that below and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching! Bye!